this is Chapino here. Welcome you guys to week 9 of the PMC League Mouse. This week we are taking on a team that we lost previously to by one Pokemon. It is the Great Lake Green Ninjas, coached by Jonah. Check out his channel, link for it is in the description down below. Having all his team, since the last time we fought, there has been a few slight differences to his team. So let's quickly run through his team so we understand what team he's bringing this week. Uh, he has the Gengar, the Magnazone, the Gligar, the Greninja, the Kirim, the Slowking, the Tornadus Incarnate, Whimsicott, Hippomlee, Pyrrhal, and Mega Scissor. So obviously some new threats in his team including the Gengar, the uh, Slowking, and the Wimscott and the Pyral. They are the newest Pokemon to his team, but also we've got to take into account, obviously, things like, you know, Choice Specs Kieran, um, obviously things like Mega Scissor. Um, Himalay, he didn't bring in the last battle, but that doesn't mean he won't bring it this time. So having a look at his team and having a look at what he's all about, um, if he doesn't want Rocks to be on his team, he has to bring the Hitmon Lee. Unless he has some other, I mean, he could bring Defog Mega Scissor, but I don't think he would want to waste a move slot on that for that. Um, so looking at his team, looking at my team, this is what I've decided to come down to. Now, as much as I wanted to bring in the um, the Mega Sableye, honestly, I just didn't think Mega Sableye had a strong point against his team, especially when he has things like Gengar that just get access to things like um, you know Dazzling Gleam and all that, um, or even things like um, you know uh, uh, the, the Choice Specs the, uh, Choice Specs Kira, which can take hits from a from a Mega Sableye here. So really, I didn't like it. Plus the fact that Whimsicott on this team definitely made it a bit of a hindrance to bring it. So this is what I've decided to bring this week, and I hope if you guys have any opinions on my team, I would definitely recommend you leave a comment, tell me uh, you know what is good about it, what's bad about it, ways I can improve, because I always like your input on my teams, because I always try to you know improve. We've got two wins back to back so far. If we can make it three, it can only improve our chances to making the PMC playoffs for season two. We missed out on season one, but that's okay. Um, things have been done a little bit differently, so hopefully there might be a chance for me to make it. But Without further ado, let's go into it. So first off, we have Talonflame here with Sharp Beak, Gale Wings, uh, Brave Bird, Flare Blitz, uh, Swords Dance, and Roost. Now the reason why I decided to bring uh, Swords Dance this week is because of the Slow King. Now looking at the Slow King here, there's a few ways we can look at it. Uh, yes, it is definitely the biggest check that he has to his team to Talonflame. But if we can get the Slow King riddled down enough to where a uh, a Brave Bird from Talonflame can get the kill. Now according to calculations that I've ran, a maximum defensive Slow King takes about roughly 40, uh, I can't remember, let me quickly actually just double check it, I can quickly go ahead and check it, um, let me just open another window over here, and just go ahead and see exactly what we can do here. Let me just quick calc it, because um, I think I was talking to the Verge, who is the coach of the Tampa Bay Frogadiers from before, um, I just want to check out a Slow King, how much damage, uh, let's see, offensive, uh, oh you can't mind, alright let's go, 252, so Brave Bird, wait that doesn't matter really, wait, 50, and let's go 50 over here. Alright, so Brave Bird to a maximum defense, maximum HP does only a quarter. Does only 25.7% at the most. Let me just double check to make sure everything, uh, jolly, no, we're adamant. So let's quickly go ahead and just change that. Okay, so um, the uh, an adamant Brave Bird does at most 28.2%. With the plus two, if we can get a sword dance off, it does 54.9%. So what we're trying to prepare for is if we can get um, the sloking around just under half, there's a good chance that we have to actually take it out with a plus two uh, Brave Burn. Um, so keeping that in mind, obviously we've got to try to make sure we make the scouts and the reads for everything. And obviously Talonflame being the biggest check to my opponent's uh, Mega Scissor. Uh, next one I'm going to look at is um, uh, Dublay, which is a superhero from the last last week's match against the um, the Baltimore Rio Oriolus. Uh, man, taking out the Tentacle and the uh, Tornadus in cut was uh, absolutely sorry. The Theron was absolutely insane. The, the Gyro Ball Sword Sense, it was insane. So we have Shazneg, Gyro Ball, Pursuit, Sword Sense. So look at his team here. Dublay really does pack a lot against his team here. So. Obvious Pokemon it can check, it can check um, the it can check the Kiram, um, it can check the uh, the oh, what's that Mega Scissor, um, it can definitely check the Tornadus Incarnate. Um, even though I know it does get access to Heat Wave, but um, 
you know, we have Eevee Light, so we are able to live at least one hit, so we can go for a, like we did last time, uh, swap, go for Sword Stance, and then go for Gyro Ball, live for one hit, and then get a kill with Gyro Ball, fantastic. So it checks the Gengar, it checks the Kirim, it checks the, um, the Slow King, because it's obviously, you know, it's uh, Ghost. Um, it can do some damage to the Whimsicott, especially because Whimsicott is incredibly fast, so we can definitely do some work there. And like I said, uh, the uh, Mega Scissor. So the thing we're going to look out for though is that Pyrrhal. If he decides to bring up Pyrrhal, uh, it just flat out checks Dublin. And we have Pursuit on the up chance he tries to swap things out like Gengar or anything like that where you know, he would just think, you know, now would be the opportune time to swap out the Dublade. Um, next we have Aromatisse here. Now we're going to bring the Trigger and Set, which is another reason why I brought the Dublade as a, a Brave Nature. Um, look at his team here, a lot of his team do generally outspeed my team. Um, so we can try and take advantage of that and try to bring Trick Room Aromatisse here. It worked out for us pretty well against uh, the Baltimore Riolos last week when we took out the, um, the x Cloud. Wait, that was two weeks ago, what am I talking about? Uh, two weeks ago, so we have Moonblast, Trick Room, Wish and Protect. So hopefully, we can try to reapply what we did before and make it work for us this time. So, obviously with saying that though, we do have Dragalgy here, Assault Fest Adaptability, but a few differences this time. So let me just run things with you. So, this time it's not a uh, calm nature, this is a sassy nature. So basically, I'm banking on the Trick Room to kind of help us out here. Um, with that said though, Drake Meteor, Sludge Wave, Scold, and Hidden Power Fire. So this can go one of two ways for us. Number one, it can work for us with Skull trying to get burned on our opponent. Number two, it works out for us because Hidden Power Fire almost okos, I'm pretty sure it okos a Mega Sizzle. Let me just quickly go ahead and double check that. So let's go, uh, let's see, let's see, Dragalgy. Uh, let's go, I'm not sure space, more breaker. All right, so we get rid of the special attack, so he's got no special attack. And let's bring in a Mega Scissor. And let's see how much damage a Okay, let's go bulky. Alright, so let's see how much damage a... We'll give it a focus blast here. Let's go for hidden power fire. Let's see how much fire. Okay, so with that in form of special attack investment, um, the hidden power fire does 79.3% damage. So that will do 80% to a scissor. Now, give or take what he does to us. Having a look at what he does here. So let's go for maximum attack here. The maximum attack. Mega Scissor. Let's see him go for it. Bullet Punch does 44.6% to, well hang on, let's make our HP maximum. So his Bullet Punch will do 42.5% at most. This is just calculating off, um, he has maximum attack against just my maximum HP, no defense. So making sure that we can live at least one hit where we can go ahead and get off the Heat Power Fire. If we happen to anticipate a swap into Skull, and he tries to go for a source or something, we can go for the Hidden Power Fire, and we can pretty much flinch it, cinch it there. So hopefully things do work out for us, but that's just the way we go. And then the Assault Best, as we covered from last time, uh, we lived on 1 HP from a Choice Specs Kirim Drake and Meteor. So hopefully we can bank on like, the Trick Room to kind of help us out in the matchup against that Kirim. Now we actually have, we have our Choice Scarf Crocodile with Boxy Boost, definitely coming in clutch the last couple of weeks. Uh, Crunch, Super Power, Earthquake, and Stone Age. Uh, a lot of coverage in his team there, covers a lot of these weaknesses and everything else. The only things we need to look out for is in fact if he does bring any Scarf Monty himself. Um, if he brings in Scarf Gengar with Dazzling Gleam, that can definitely put a ding in our Crocodile. Actually probably would kill. Um, but, you know, we just gotta try to make sure we have to make the reads into those kind of situations. But, in the off chance he does have any kind of special threats, we do have our last Pokemon, which is Uxie. So Uxie is gonna be our special defensive wall, maximum HP, maximum special defense. Uh, leftovers with Knockoff, Psy Shock, Thunder Wave, and Stealth Rock. Now, I think Stealth Rock is going to be pretty crucial in this matchup here, only because I do realize a lot of these Pokemon do not like rocks at all. So looking at his team here, let's see, who doesn't like rocks? Kyrim doesn't like rocks, Janaeus doesn't like rocks, Pyro doesn't like rocks, and Mega is not going to appreciate being riddled down by Stealth Rock since it's neutral by any means. So, I don't know how important he's going to feel about getting rid of rocks, but having Thunder Wave out will actually help us out pretty well. The only thing I can see is a bit of a downside to the Thunder Wave is the fact that if we run Trick Room with Thunder Wave, it can cause a conflict of interest, but hopefully we can take advantage of that and work with it either way. Because I mean, Trick Room is only temporary, but Thunder Wave is permanent. So we can get swap-ins on things like, you know, Kirim, or a very fast Pokemon, go for the Thunder Wave, and we can pretty much just stop it in the tracks and make sure certain Pokemon outspeed it. So, fingers crossed that things work out from here. So, as I say, thank you very much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you hit like button down below. 
Let's hope, fingers crossed, we can get revenge on the Great Lake Greninjas for them beating us by only one Pokemon in the last episode. But as we've started, as you can see from last season and this season, we usually have a bit of a bumpy start, but we actually start to pick up our pace through the midst of the rounds because we're getting used to prepping ourselves, we're getting used to anticipating moves, taking a bit of risks sometimes. But you know what? It just comes down to just being a bit more. Um, being conservative, but also just learning when to pick your spots, which I mean every Wi-Fi battle will tell you, you know, you, sometimes you have to go out on the whim to win the game sometimes. So, hopefully things work out here. I will say thank you very much for enjoying this, or hopefully you enjoyed it. I already said that. Stay tuned for the Wi-Fi bell that comes out this weekend, uh, sorry, on the early Monday morning for me, which will probably be the afternoon for you Americans and the Eastern Standard Time. And until the next time I see you guys, uh, stay safe, stay sharp, and I will catch you guys all next time. Later!